Kansas-Can, now joining us live from Lawrence, Kansas, is a man who has had notable degrees from Stanford, Notre Dame, and mostly Brigham Young, who now works at Kansas, who comes down on the show to talk about Kansas, BYU, and even men's hoops. It's Nate Mickle. Nate, what up, dog from Lawrence? How is it today? So great to be here. And I, like I say, I'm, I'm possibly the uh, most excited person about BYU to the Big 12 because BYU and my friends get to come out here every year, multiple times a year. So couldn't be happier. Do you take a lot of heat from the Jayhawk students in your class heading into a game like this? Um, I mean, the truth is like, no, I, you know, it would be more fun if I could say, yeah, and they were asking me, but, uh, I love KU basketball. Now I do love BYU basketball, you know, more. Um, but basically we kind of feel like we're on the same team 99% of the time. And so today it, it'll be fun to see what happens. The other thing too is, you know, most of the fans around here fully expect KU to win. So I, I think that's a, a, you know, another factor in this. That's a reasonable ask, given how good Kansas is typically, that they haven't lost at home since last year. TCU went in there, was the last team to do it. <laughs> so what are you expecting tonight with the BYU team that's played pretty well this year, but uh, obviously coming off a disappointing uh, performance in the Sunflower State at Kansas State Saturday? Yeah, so here's what's going to happen, okay? So Khalif is going to be dropping dimes like crazy. Let's Dallin go. Hall is going to have seven to eight assists. Trevin Nell, Noah Waterman, Spencer Johnson, they're all going to hit a bunch of threes. Jackson Robinson's going to hit a big three, hit some big free throws down the line. Foose is going to finish in the paint like a madman. Richie's going to hustle and make plays all over the place, and BYU's going to win. I like it. This, this sounds good. That sounds like uh, a breakdown from a guy who's going to be wearing a BYU shirt at Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs> yeah, what are you wearing tonight? <laughs> I uh, I mean TBD. <laughs> you know it's hard to you know it's like do I really wear a shirt that's a you know a cheering against the 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 you know the place that writes my check? Uh, I, I will not. Yeah, I I, I will probably be neutral. I'm probably not going to wear Kansas, but I, I don't think I. I will see. We'll see. Yeah. Don't I'll, wear I'll one of those pretty. split things though. That's just weird. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Unless you have a kid on both teams, then it's fine. But I've seen the split thing before, and it just ticks me off. You know. Um, yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, you you recently uh, had Andy Reid on your podcast. Um, what what was it like coming off the uh, Super Bowl win for our guy Andy Reid there? Of course, uh, in, uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, so great to talk to Andy. Such a stud. I got lined up with him. Uh, I'd ask somebody to line me up with him, and he sends he Andy sends me an email like 24 hours later. Like, here's my cell phone. Give me a call. Let's talk. So cool. And yeah, I just asked him about leadership. I teach leadership at the University of Kansas, and Andy uh, said that first, I thought it was cool. He started by talking about how much he learned from Lavelle and the church leaders, our church leaders, but also from Lavelle and how he was never out of control and he was honest and he's a good teacher. Um, and so he talks about staying under control with, you know, Travis Kelsey bumping him uh, in the Super Bowl. But I thought what was really cool ultimately is Andy spent basically the entire interview just talking about how awesome. Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Chris Jones are, how much he loves them. And to me, it was like, that's why Andy's so great. Like, yeah, those things that he learned from the bell matter. But the other thing that he learned from the bell, and the other thing that he just probably does pretty well is he just loves people and he treats them the right way. He knows them. He remembers that Chris Jones didn't get drafted on the first day that he was wearing a red tuxedo eight years ago, didn't go on the first day, and then they got him. So I, it was just so cool to hear Andy's perspective, but then really kind of, think about it after the fact and it's like oh that's you know that's why Andy's so great is, is he loves his players and, and they love him isn't it interesting that coaching style we quickly label as old school um and and they are set apart because they're so different and then all these up and coming coaches are so busy trying to i don't know invent themselves but they look at the standard and yet they they they're over here being just the opposite and, and that allows the standard of Andy Reid just to continue to grow into, man, he just has got it figured out. Everyone should figure it out and, and follow guys like him like he's followed Lavelle. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I was in a, I was in a uh, discussion with my friends yesterday, and there's this new series on Netflix that's chronicling. Well, I, I think it's relatively new. Chronicles, uh, you know, the, the Florida football program. And the way Urban Meyer went in there and changed the culture overnight, I don't know that many other styles would have worked to get results so quickly. Uh, but Andy's res but first I would, I mean, part of me, it's like, part of me would want to play for urban 
just to, to be in such a hyper competitive environment. But part of me wants to just like take video and sh and leak it to the press and show how uh, toxic that that workplace would be. Whereas Andy, it's almost like a slow build, but over time you get the right guys and they love each other and they play for each other. And now he's got a dynasty going. And I think it is that style that's contributed so much to the success at Kansas City. You see Kalani trying to do some of that too. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And you certainly have to surround yourself with greatness, as Chad Lewis wrote about in his book, right? Um, if Lavelle doesn't get the right OCs and the right quarterbacks, he's probably not the Lavelle we know, right? And if exactly. Andy Reid doesn't have uh, Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, who knows what that looks like? Still good, but is it this good? Um, so you need some breaks here and there. And uh, it's, it's funny how the breaks happen to the nice guys sometimes, right? The guys who do it the right way, which it did happen. Let's finish with this, Nate. What makes Fog Allen Fieldhouse so unique to go to for a game, which some BYU fans are flying in to see this tonight? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's the birthplace of college basketball. So Allen Fieldhouse is on Naismith Drive. James Naismith founded the program. He was the first basketball coach at Kansas. His, uh, his player, Fog Allen, was the second, he became the second coach. That's who the arena is named after. Fog Allen's player, Adolph Rupp, went to Kentucky, which is now the all-time winningest program. Their arena, of course, is named Rupp Arena. Oh, Kansas will likely soon overtake them as the all-time winningest program. Dean Smith, he played for KU under Fog Allen, won a national championship, then went to North Carolina where he, went, where he won two more. Uh, Roy Williams made it to two national championships as the head coach at KU. Then he won three at North Carolina. Uh, there's a shirt here I love in Lawrence that it says, uh, Lawrence, Kansas, the birthplace of North Carolina basketball. Uh, <laughs> you, you got Larry Brown. He won a championship at Kansas, then won a championship in the NBA. I believe he's the only NBA coach to do so. Mm. And now you have Bill Self with two championships. You got players like Wilt Chamberlain, Danny Manning, Paul Pierce, Joel Embiid, Andrew Wiggins. The original rules of basketball are here. Now, I really do hope that BYU does what I said they're going to do. So much of the game tonight, it just depends on if BYU hits threes. If BYU yeah. can hit threes, they can win. This KU team is not deep. They're super talented at the top end. Dickinson and Furphy. McCuller's not playing, obviously. Uh, Dewan, that played for the national championship team. KJ Adams, who's the, one of the bounciest players I've ever seen. But that's it. So if, if any of them get in foul trouble, have an off game, and or if BYU can hit threes, they really can win tonight. It's not going to take a miracle. It would just take them hitting threes and playing a solid game. Hey, not on that original rule list is the three-point shot which is the key yeah. for the <laughs> Yeah, also. And, and KU, KU treats it that way, right? They do not shoot three-pointers hardly at all this <laughs> They're year. offended by the yeah, three. They, they, they yeah. stick to the creed there. <laughs> Nate, yeah. we appreciate the time as always. Uh, I'm interested to see what shade of blue you wear tonight. Uh, we'll have Spencer report on that coming up tomorrow. Thanks, Nate. Please do. Yeah, I'll send a picture. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nate. Nate Mickle from Lawrence. We appreciate it.